Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This is Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say, Call Hala, Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, Amanawa, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. And Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And we are now entering into the second month. This is the new moon, second month. You know, our glorification to the Most High for getting us through another month. You know, we just had a mighty month of a build. You know, the first month, according to the Hebrew calendar, you know, where we celebrated our Passover, the Lord's Passover. You know, we, we kept the memorial of commemorating the Passover by... You know, eating the Passover lamb and the bitter herbs, having a memorial service to commemorate when we was delivered out of the land of Egypt, out of the hands of our enemies, as well as acknowledging the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made for us on the, on the cross, man, by dying for our sins and sacrificing himself for the greater good of the nation. You know, so now we're coming into the second month, you know, and, um, if you wasn't able to keep the Passover the first month, you are able to make it up this month on um, 14 days after this new moon, you're able to make up the Passover, right? Let's get that. In the book of Numbers. The ninth chapter, Salakia. Numbers chapter 9, and let's start at verse. And let's start at verse 6. Matter of fact, we'll start at verse 1. Numbers chapter 9 and verse 1, and it reads, And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year, they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at its appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. So we kept the Passover in the month of Abib, um, in our new year, you know, according to the Hebrew calendar, the new year starts in the month of Abib, in the spring, right? And we kept Passover. But there are some brothers and sisters that wasn't able to keep Passover due to uncleanness, right? So you have a chance to make it up this month. Verse four, and Moses spake, spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord Yahweh commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. Verse six. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. So there were certain men that couldn't keep Passover because they was defiled with a dead body, meaning they either was in the presence of a dead body in the tent or, or they touched the dead body or they or they, you know, slaughtered an enemy or something. Right. Verse number seven, and those men said unto him, we are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering to the Lord Yahweh in his appointed season among the children of Israel? Verse eight, and Moses said unto them, stand still. I will hear what the Lord Yahweh will command concerning you. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your poster, uh, posterity shall be unclean by the reason of a dead body or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord Yahweh. Right. So to answer their question, you know, could, can they still make an offering to the Lord Yahweh for the, for the appointed season of Passover? And the answer is yes. Right. If you touch the dead body, you unclean, right? You was in a journey afar off. You should still keep the Passover. Verse 11, and it's the point. 
the 14th day of the second month at even ye shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So you get to do the makeup Passover in the second month on the 14th day. You keep it as if it was the first one. This is just the makeup Passover. Right. And sometimes I, I'll keep it twice. You know, just to celebrate it with the brothers that missed it the first time. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, stay in the spirit of Passover, man, because that's a that's a very powerful high holy day. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with keeping it twice if you choose to. But if you couldn't keep it the first time being unclean, reason of a dead body or you was in the journey of far off, you know, out of town for work or whatever. Right. You you can come back home and keep the uh the lord's passover in the second month and that's what it's going into man the feast of unleavened bread and you you do the ritual the same exact way as if you would in the month of a bill verse number 12 they shall leave none of it to the morning nor break any bone of it according to all the ordinances of the passover they shall keep it so you keep it the exact same way you would as if you were keep keeping it in the month of a bill there's no difference. You you keep it the exact same way. You follow the same instructions and the same ordinances for the for the high holy week of the feast of unleavened bread. Verse 13. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of Yahweh in his appointed season, that that man shall bear his sin. Right. So if if you're not unclean and you refuse to keep the Passover in the month of a bib, right, if you just found any little excuse not to congregate or fellowship with your brethren and gather together for the Lord's Passover, you're going to be cut off from your people. You know, there's no makeup Passover for you. You know what I'm saying? If you just chose not to keep the Passover, you can't just come and keep it the second month. When you have no legitimate excuse of being unclean or being in a journey or far off, you cannot keep the Lord's Passover. You're cut off. Right. And and that's that, man. So we in the second month, you know, happy brew moon to the brothers, to the 12 tribes, to the sisters, you know, that's scattered abroad. You know, that's sincere in this word, that's trying to please the heavenly father and come back into the good graces of the most high and enter back into the marriage covenant with the most high. You know, happy brew moon, you know, second month, you know, and, um, you know, according to the Gregorian calendar, the, the second month usually is toward the end of April, beginning of May, you know, the time span we're in right now, you know, and um, the second month is called Ziff, right? The first month is called Abib. The second month is called Ziff or Ziv, which means light or glow. So we're in, the, we're in the month of light or the, or the month of glow right now. All right. And to prove that, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 1. All right. The book of 1 Kings chapter 6. And we're going to start at the first verse. And this is going into when Solomon began to build the temple of the Most High. All right. 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 1. And it reads. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month Ziph, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord Yahweh. Right. So a uh, 180th year after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt. And this is the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel. He's 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 into his fourth year. That's the time. That's the time span. Right. It's the month of Ziph, which means light or glow. And it's the second month. So you can keep the makeup Passover in the second month in the month of Ziph. Right. And this is when Solomon began to build a house of the most high, the tabernacles or the uh the actual temple of the Most High. He invested a lot of money and um, he made a great temple for the Lord, man. All right. In the month he began building it in the month of Ziph. And that's synonymous to what we must be doing right now. We must begin 
to build the temple of the Most High through the Spirit, right? We don't have an actual temple, right? The Most High not dwelling in temples made with hands. You got to build up your own temple. You got to build up yourself and your brethren and your sisters around you in this word, man. You got to put off those mortal thoughts, those selfish thoughts, man. You got to build up yourself as well as your brothers and sisters. That's why the Most High created us to be his servants in the first place, man, to, to raise up the sons of Jacob, to raise up the tribes of Jacob in this final hour. All right, because it's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, and, and it's unbelievable. It's unreal. You know, you have women killing their children, men killing their families, right? Evil is waxing worse and worse on the earth, man. You have people being complete fornicators and adulterers and not thinking none of it. Feel as if they don't have to suffer no consequences, man. The world is waxing worse and worse, man. You hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's why it's important for, for Yasharala, for Israel to stay um, in tune with the mission, with the assignment that's at hand, man. Don't get, don't get distracted by these worldly events, right? Don't get distracted by these damn diss tracks, man, right? Diss track goes into distract. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's entertaining, but at the same time, don't get caught up in it. We have a bigger mission at hand, man. Right. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse five. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse five, and it reads, And now saith the Lord, Yahweh, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Right. So the Most High formed us from the womb to be his servant. Before he formed us in our mother's belly, he knew us, man. Before the foundation of the world, he, he gave us our lot. And our lot is to bring Jacob again to him. The, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, our brothers and sisters that's following the ways of America, that are Hellenistic Israelites, right? We, we got to bring them back to the Most High. They say, though Israel be not gathered, Speaking about the, the northern kingdom, the northern tribes. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my power shall be my strength. Verse 6, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Right? It's a light thing, man. This is what we do. It's like breathing, man. Bringing our people back to the covenant. Renewing our people's mind to repentance. And converting them with the law, statutes, and commandments and bringing them back into the sheepfold. It's a light thing, man. It's, it's second nature. Right? Verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. So we must pres preserve. So like we must restore the preserved of the northern tribes. Right? That's what we must do. That's why we out there with our Issacharite brothers, man, and our Ephraimite brothers, you know, trying to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, man, the scattered sheep, those that don't know that they are Israel, right? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. So we're going to be showing the heathens the right way to move out here, man, the way the world's supposed to be ran. We're going to show them the way because they don't know the way. All they know is darkness and chaos and, and disorder. We're going to show them order. We're going to show them discipline. We're going to show them structure. Right. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the end of the earth. And that's what we're called to do, man. Right. We must show our people these law, statutes and commandments and teach them to choose life, man. Follow the most high. Come out that old mindset that you was once in. Right. Because, like my brother Script Puller always say, man, you could run up an iniquity tab. And you don't want that iniquity tab, man, because you got to pay the price for that, man. You got to pay the price for that iniquity tab, man. At least you repent. Right? Because when you just sin, when, when you just do one sin, that it ain't just one sin you're doing. It's multiple sins that's connected to that one sin. Like, let's just say you commit adultery. Right? You sleeping with a married woman. 
um, y'all going out on dates or whatever. Yeah, you come in adultery with this woman, but you're also bearing false witness when, when your rib call you and you lying about where you at, lying about who you with, you know, so you started with adultery. Now you're bearing false witness. Right. And and now you're being covetous. You're covetous after what your neighbor got. So you're sleeping with his wife. So you commit an adultery, you bear false witness, and you you cover you being covetous. The most I say, thou shalt not covet. Right? And not only that, you're not loving your neighbor as yourself because you're sleeping with your neighbor's wife. Right? So what started off as adultery, it then went to bearing false witness. Because you lying about who you with and where you at. It don't went to being covetous because you desiring something that don't belong to you. Right? You're not loving your neighbor as yourself because you're sleeping with your neighbor's wife. You're building up an iniquity tab, man. Right? You're not just doing one little sin and that's it that you got to repent from. You got to repent from a plethora of sins that you're doing. And we bring in awareness to that. Right? We bring an awareness to our people to that because... We have studied the law, statutes, and commandments, and we know what's good and what's evil. Right? Our people are out here without discernment. They don't know the difference between good and evil. They think they do, but they don't. So that's why we got to shine this light upon our people, man, and upon the rest of the world. Right? Let's go to the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha, chapter 4 and verse 1. The book of Baruch, chapter four and verse one, and it reads, this is the book of the commandments of the most high and the law that endure forever. All that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Right. So these commandments, these law statutes and commandments, they're going to endure forever, man. They're going to always be here to guide the earth, to guide the people that's on the earth. All that keep it shall come to life, but such as uh, so like it, but such as leave it shall die. So people that keep the commandments, you're going to come to life, man. People that acknowledge their transgression and repent from their sins, you're going to come to life. But when you leave it, you're going to die. The most I put before us life and blessings, death and curses. You have to pick a side. You see, you're going to keep the law. You're going to be lawless. You have to choose a side. Verse number two, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. So turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Right? Speaking to the children of Israel. Hey, you got to, hey, you got to turn back to the Most High and take hold of these law, statutes, and commandments, man. Right? You got to, that's, that's your lifeline. You got to hold on that for dear life, man, because that's going to be your salvation at the end of the day. Right. Keeping the law, keeping the faith, man, that's going to be your salvation at the end of the day. It's a walk in the presence of the light thereof because the law is light, man. Matter of fact, let's get that because you want to be illuminated. These scriptures make you become illuminated. You have a glow about yourself like uh, Bruce Leroy, man. You have a glow about yourself. Right. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter six and verse twenty three. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter six and verse twenty three, and it reads for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the commandment is a lamp and the law is light, meaning in this dark world that we live in, in because it's dark. Right. The valley of the shadow of death is, is darkness. Right mean wickedness on every side these law statutes and commandments is a guide in this dark world to light your paths so you don't step in a trap so you don't step in a in a, in a snare man right if, if you got all the lights off in a in a, in a big ass house and it's in it's toys and trash and you know steps that you got to go down. If, if the lights are off, you can't see those steps. You can't see those toys. You're going to trip and fall and hurt yourself. Right. But these law statutes, these law statutes and commandments serve you as a as a light to guide your step. So if you in that dark house and you just hit that cell phone light, you know, the, the flashlight on your cell phone and pan it around, you can kind of guide yourself through the house without 
falling and hurting yourself the same way with these law, statutes and commandments with our people roaming around here in America. Right. Even though it's daytime out, it's still darkness on every side. You got adultery, fornication, uh, idolatry, which is real heavy in America. Idolatry is big business. Um, you have theft. Right. You have unjust judgments. You have witchcraft and sorcery all around you, man. But these law, statutes and commandments is going to guide you through this valley of the shadow of death so you don't feel no harm. So no evil thing can come upon you, upon thee. Right. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. You want to be illuminated by that light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So being corrected and being instructed and guided, that's the way of life, man. That's the way of life. And the most high letting us know that in this month of Ziff, we must let our light shine this month, man. We must let our light shine this month because we are the children of light. Right? Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14 and it reads, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So we are the light of the world, the children of Israel. You so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. Ye are the light of the world, man. That's what Christ is telling us. Hamashiach Yahweh is telling us that we are the light of the world. We are a city that's set on a high hill that can't be hid. You're going to always see that lit up city, right? It's like before you even get to Vegas, miles away, miles and miles away, you can see the lights. Right. The same with us. We cannot be hid. Verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it give it light unto all that are in the house. So we don't we don't hide our light. We don't dim our light for nobody. Right. We don't put our light under a bushel. We don't hide it, hide it and conceal it. No, we put it on a candlestick. So everybody in the house can 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 be illuminated man verse 16 let your light sh let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven right and that's the purpose of letting our light shine so so our so our brothers and sisters can glorify the heavenly father which is in heaven they could see our good works they could see him working through us and they can glorify him because they know we can't do this stuff on our own, man. Right? We we just don't have that power in us. That's the power of the Heavenly Father. The power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah that perfect our works and, and make our works be known. Or his works be known through us. Right? Let your light so shine before men, meaning let these laws, statutes, and commandments shine. Hey man, we got a barbecue, man. You want this, you want this um this pork rib sandwich? No, nah, brother, I ain't with that. I don't, I don't eat pork. Why? Because of the, Levit the Leviticus law, right? Leviticus, the 11th chapter, the dietary laws. I don't, I don't do that. That's letting your light shine, right? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven, right? So happy brew moon, you know, second month. It's time to let, let your light shine, man. It's time to continue to raise up the remnant of the children of Israel and bring them back to, to, to the heavenly father, man. All right. Bid them back to the marriage. Hit those highways and byways. If you can't hit the highways and byways, hit the super international highways and byways, which is the, the, the internet, right? You can get views, posting lessons and stuff on the internet, right? If you can't make it outside in the streets and, and you ain't got no people to, you know, no brothers to fellowship with or to, to hold count with. Hey, get on the Internet by any means. Do whatever, whatever you can and use whatever tools that you got possible to convey this message in this final hour, because it's finna be it's finna be some dark times, man. So let your light shine. You know, this month is Ziff, you know, light or glow, meaning light or glow. Hey, we got to shine this month, Israel. You know, and with that. I like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, Amanawab, Barakata. It's H O I Las Vegas. It's H O I to the chairs fly. Shalom, Yasharala.